Washington Duke, a strong man in his mid-40s, returned to the simple home he left in Durham, North Carolina. Duke had left behind a humble but successful farmstead in the hands of tenant farmers because his second wife, Artilia Roney, had died about five years before the war. A Union sympathizer, Duke was conscripted to serve as a Confederate soldier. Upon his return home from the more than 160-mile walk from the POW camp from which he was released in New Bern, Duke had no idea what he might find on his 300 acres in the central hills of the Old North State. With almost no money in his pocket and few possessions on his back, Mr. Duke came back to a home in shambles, no tenants in sight and no crops in his fields. His four remaining children had gone to live with Artelia's family in Greensboro, and they were soon reunited. Starting almost from scratch, Washington Duke began to rebuild the tobacco farm he'd cultivated before the war. A man of deep Methodist faith, he had already experienced multiple tragedies and trials, and he was not about to give up. Tobacco was not his first effort at farming. Originally, he'd grown corn, oats, wheat, sweet potatoes, and cotton. But these failed to support him, and he started to grow tobacco, which he found to be a better investment. With the country now rebuilding itself and his children older, he seized on the newfound popularity of Brightleaf tobacco, growing it with more fervor than before. The demand for tobacco after the war allowed Duke's farm to grow rapidly, and with the railroad so close by, he quickly developed a large enterprise for shipping the smokable leaves all over the country. Duke's entrepreneurial spirit quickly transformed his simple farmstead into a major international company. Shortly after the turn of the century, the tobacco empire possessed enough wealth to allow for the eventual relocation of the college, which now bears his name as a major research and teaching institution, Duke University.